Hello and welcome back to the 80s Toy Museum. And this is a Patreon special missions request from good friend Cameron Johnson. You've heard Cameron on some of my commentaries. Looking forward to doing another one with him and Eric very soon for a uh, classic favorite movie. But Cameron asked if I could show off my Toy Biz X-Men collection. Doing a little rearranging here. Going to dedicate an entire shelf just to Marvel. There's going to be some Marvel Legends on one side. Maybe Marvel Select. Got Sleepwalker here right now. Awesome, awesome comic written by Bob Budiansky, the uh, godfather of Transformers. But going to be going through all of my uh, Toy Biz X-Men figures right now. And starting off with the biggest guy. It's Apocalypse, or as it's pronounced in Australia, Pocalypse. And just in case you've never seen me talk about this before, dusting all of my X-Men figures. It's been so long since I've played around with them. They're all very dusty. Just grab a brush. This is what I do. It takes about 10 seconds each figure. You can either have a, a giant brush like that, or you can use a smaller brush like this to get in the little crevasses. Get all the dust out of there. Uh, dust is such a nothing issue for me. Always has been. Never crosses my mind because there is pretty good buildup of dust in this guy right now and done. Looks good as new. So that's why I don't sweat dust. I like to have everything just out in the open so I can grab it and play around with it. But here's Apocalypse. Most of the Toy Biz figures that came out in the 90s are about five inches. Some of them got supersized, Wolverine, a couple of the other characters. And this is the only one that I have of the supersized, mainly because Apocalypse can grow. It's, it's one of his gimmicks. He can actually increase in size. So I thought it would look cool if the uh, regular one, five inch version of Apocalypse had the giant in behind him. So that's the five inch one. And as I go, I will be sticking these in behind. And I generally like to have my heroes up front and the villains in behind. Next up is kind of an obscure villain. His name is Genesis and his real name is Tyler Dayspring. So if that rings a bell, this guy right here is Nathan Dayspring, AKA Cable. And so Tyler Dayspring is the son of Cable and he ends up actually being one of the villains. So kind of the opposite of Luke Skywalker and Vader. This is more of a, I guess, Kylo Ren and Han Solo type of thing where the apple fell far from the tree. So I haven't seen much, heard much about Genesis in a long, long time. I can't believe I remembered that's what he was called but because he's got that familial connection with Cable, who's one of my favorite Marvel characters, I, uh, I wanted to pick up little Cable Jr. there. And another baddie. I can't remember who is on whose team. This guy is Caliban. I know at one point he's one of Apocalypse's four horsemen. I don't know if he hooks up with Magneto at some point too, but really nice big beefy figure with a cool looking removable cape on it and speaking of Magneto this is uh, the first version of Magneto he doesn't really want to stand all that well there were two versions I believe well maybe maybe more I'm not all that immersed in the uh, toy biz x-men figures other than what I own but there's the original Magneto who has trouble standing they do have peg holes which is really nice put some stands on there and then another version of Magneto. This one's much cooler. It uh, actually has little magnets inside his hands. So if you take something metal, like one of these pegboard hooks, it has ever so slightly a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of magnetism. It's extremely weak. Nothing like the crazy powerful magnets they got today. That probably actually wouldn't be too hard a custom job to just pop that out, put in one of those super, super strong magnets you find on eBay or Amazon. And it's cool that a uh, toy of Magneto has magnets in them. It's just a shame that they're so weak and 
coolest feature of this version of Magneto is that the helmet actually comes off. And that's how I like to display this figure, holding up his helmet, mocking Xavier, popping it on before Xavier can control his mind, and the other one with his helmet on since he can't take it off. Unfortunately, G.I. Joe stands won't work on these. They're just ever so slightly too big. You can just get it on the very, very edge of them. So I guess if you grind them down a little bit with a pair of pliers, you can get it to work. And since Magneto isn't a typical villain, he's actually kind of one of the greatest comic book tweeners that ever lived. Because I feel like he hasn't been a hero as much as he's been a villain, but when he's a hero, it really counts. So I actually like to keep him closer to the front with the other heroes. This guy's pure villain though, Sabretooth, Wolverine's arch rival. I guess he does join X-Men, X-Force. I stopped reading in the 90s, so I'm not up to speed on who joined what team, but I always remember this guy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wolverine all the time. And some of these actually have some action features. This one, because Sabretooth has uh, accelerated healing, just like Wolverine, you can see if my nails are sharp enough. Give him a, a claw on the chest. And it's pretty much exactly like uh, Battle Armor He-Man's gimmick. And a cool little bonus feature of this saber tooth is that he's got glow-in-the-dark eyes. They don't shine all that bright, but it's a cool little effect. And then there was a second version of Sabretooth, and I much prefer this costume. I've got some sticky tack on there since he wouldn't stand properly. This looks a, a lot more like the brown Wolverine outfit. And he's a little bit wobbly, but uh, really like the fur. And there he goes. That's okay. He heals quick. And he has an action feature if you squeeze his legs together. He, uh, he can do some chomping. And luckily the turtle shelf is pretty close by, so you can satiate the saber tooth. That fits right in there with some pizza. And this little guy, I believe, came with Genesis. I don't know what his name is. If you feel like putting a timestamp and letting everyone else know who he is, go, go for it. He's uh, kind of a cool translucent. Looking plastic looks especially cool with the light right underneath him. And Gideon, I believe he's from X-Force. One of uh, Strife's henchmen, I think, maybe. Again, I don't know much about him. He's just kind of there to bolster the bad guy ranks. Stand in the background. And this is my favorite Toy Biz X-Men villain figure. It's Strife from my favorite X-Men or... Marvel, I guess in general, not just X-Men, crossover event, The Executioner's Song. And the reason I'm such a big fan of this guy is because he is Cable, or rather a clone of Cable. And you can see on here, I've actually, this is way back when I first got him, I did this custom paint job on his eye. I took some, I think it was um, Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles slime, glow-in-the-dark slime. I waited for it to separate. If you wait long enough, the uh, the slime will separate between the actual clear slime and the glow-in-the-dark goop. So I took the glow-in-the-dark goop, which was basically like paint when it separates, and I just painted it onto his eye. And when you do that, you get this nice, bright, glowing eye effect. It doesn't last very long but when you charge it up, it's pretty nice. So even though he's a villain, he's another guy that goes to the front up here with some of the other major players like Xavier and why don't I grab Cable? This was the first X-Force Cable figure. So they did a subline of X-Men figures called X-Force, just like the comic. And there were tons of Cable. Cable was the snake eyes of X-Men and X-Force. So many different versions of him. But there's nothing quite like the first version. Comes with a gun that has like a rotating cannon on it. And he has an action feature as well. 
if you push his hand up, lock it into place, pulling this lever down will activate a chopping action if the giant gun doesn't do the job. And since one is a clone of the other, they have the exact same head sculpt, and I've done the glow-in-the-dark effect on cable as well, which looks especially cool when you got two of them side by side. But before we get to some of the X-Men and X-Force members, I'm going to get to a group called the Wild Pack, or the Six Pack. They were, I believe, first introduced in the original Cable miniseries comic. Uh, I'm, I'm going on like decades old memory here. Was it one or two? Two issues maybe? I'm not sure. I think it was right after Cable disappeared in the Executioner song. There was a flashback of Cable and his group that he had before X-Force. So they're cool. They're very uh, Dirty Dozen or Magnificent Seven type of mercenary group. I don't know much about them though. So the few that I have... They go at the back of the shelf. And one of Cable's old running buddies from the six pack, wild pack, it's Grizzly. I had no idea who this guy was, so I had to do a Google search and find out. Grizzly, and it looks like he has a lever on here. The trick is to make sure that there's clearance for both arms. If one of them is too high or too low, like this one of the arms won't do anything so click it into place and uh, it's uh, clobber in time I guess and another one of Cable's old buddies it's GW Bridge and he will not he will not stand man there we go right on the edge there leaning forward I don't believe he has an action feature maybe his his gun is the action feature. The thing I like about this six-pack team is they all look similar to Cable. They're kind of big, beefy, burly looking guys. The gun looks like it has some kind of something moves in here. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that's moving. It doesn't seem to be firing. That looks like it should come off, but it's not. I have no idea. I uh, think I got this guy later on. It's not my original from the 90s. I was able to pick a whole bunch of these up at like toy shows for five bucks each. So I don't know the action features of all of them. And then there's two versions of this guy. This is the second version. It's Kane and his other name is Weapon X, which is really weird because Wolverine was Weapon X and always will be to me. But he had an accident, so he's got these cybernetic arm implants on him. And he was one of the original members of Cable's team. There was some uh, drama between all of them, and they had a falling out. So that's the second version, which I prefer a lot more. Here's the first version, which he's not beefy and burly looking. I think this is the villain version of him when he's out for revenge against Cable. And he's got some kind of action feature with his hand. It, it comes off. There's this little switch on his back. Oh, look at that. It does come out. And uh, I'm hoping that this will yep, pull it back in. Okay, that's pretty cool. There we go. It's kind of like uh, long arms power cuffs, except it actually pulls in. So this might not be the actual costume he wore when he was hanging out with Cable and his boys, but just because he's that much beefier than this version, uh, I just keep him with this original team. This isn't necessarily the outfit Cable wore in those comics with the uh, six-pack. There's many versions of Cable, and I just felt like this was, this was the most appropriate one for that uh, group of mercenaries he hung out with in the original Weapon X, Wolverine, when he's getting the adamantium grafted onto his bones. It's a lot more well known now that it's appeared in the movies, but it was pretty obscure back in the day. 
So cool that they made a figure of it. Helmet is removable. It's too removable. It doesn't even want to stay on because of these cables feeding into it. And the claws aren't retractable. They're actually just glued right onto the hands like that. And next up is Charles Xavier in his uh, hover chair. And um, these panels actually open up and reveal this is a removable little weapon right here that he can hold or a tool something like that and I pulled it out of the other side here it's uh, I don't really picture Xavier with a laser gun but it's a cool little extra bonus Xavier doesn't need hand weapons he can just jump into your mind stop you from doing what you're trying to do to him but uh, I guess maybe Magneto if he's wearing his helmet he can't do that although see this is the rabbit hole the danger of the uh, the rabbit hole of X-Men Magneto would just pull that right out of his hand unless it's porcelain painted silver I don't know anyway it's a really cool little Xavier figure and unlike a lot of the Toy Biz figures it has no problem standing upright actually unless you push it it'll fall backward and a few other versions of Wolverine this is the first version of him and I actually had this one back in the day this isn't my original I'll show you that one in a second but this is when I started reading X-Men he was wearing this costume the brown and kind of yellow yellowish brown costume and two cool gimmicks with this figure it's got a removable mask so I think there was a version of this that had a permanently masked face but this was incredibly cool to be able to remove the mask and it's actually a teeny tiny ring too if you want to wear it as a ring Logan did spend quite a bit of time unmasked, especially in his own solo comic. So that was cool that uh, you could unmask the figure. And then this is actually probably my favorite Wolverine uh, adamantium claw gimmick on any figure. This was incredibly cool back then and still really cool today. Just tap that to the side and these just pop right out, pop the claws. Really cool figure. Even by today's standards, I think it stands the test of time. And this is my original Wolverine figure, which was painted like the one I just showed you. But then he switched to this costume, which is actually his original costume in the comics, uh, yellow and blue. The uh, blue is very, very dark on here. I think it's darkened actually since I painted it. So, they hadn't made this figure yet, and I really liked that costume, so I just gave him a custom paint job. I think I made his arms hairy too. And I popped a little piece of, oh, tape. The tape was originally on the inside of the mask so that he would have that white eyes effect that he has in the comic. But over the years, it's it looks like it's transferred onto his face, unfortunately. And, uh, oh, bone claws, right. So, at one point, Magneto pulls all the adamantium out of him, and Wolverine gets bone claws, so I painted that, too, to reflect. So, yeah, that's my original Wolverine Toy Biz figure. And then they ended up doing an official yellow and blue Wolverine version he's too tall I never picked this one up since I had my custom version of him but uh, in the comics Wolverine was a shorty and so this second version of Wolverine is just way too tall this is before Hugh Jackman got cast as Wolverine and we learned to accept a taller Wolverine six foot tall Wolverine and he's got the same type of claw gimmick, although it's activated, I believe, by twisting his waist. 
I'm not sure how to get it to work. This one might actually be broken. There's a little spot for your thumb at the back. Yeah, I don't think this is working anymore. I think the claws are supposed to go in when you twist his waist. And it looks like they're just permanently popped out on this one. And let's do some X-Force. This is Shatterstar, who is from another dimension. Likes to use blades. This is the first version of him. He's got an action feature too, um, similar to that Wolverine figure. A little place to catch your thumb on the back. The arms are connected, so I don't know if he's supposed to be swinging his arms up and down as you do this, and this figure isn't working either. I'm not sure. And the second Shatterstar. Interesting that he got a second version, just like Kane getting a second version. These days, we don't really bat an eye at any character getting a second, third, fourth, fifth version, but it was kind of a new concept back then to take a background character like Shatterstar and because he changed his outfit in the comic, well, we gotta release another version of him. And the action feature on this one is when you raise the arms up, you hear a click, it catches into place, you push the button on the back, and uh, he slices down. There isn't really much range though. Gotta get your fingers out of the way. And another X-Force member, it is Richter. And that's not the turntable that's shaking him. It is actually his special uh, play feature, which this is the first time I've ever used it. I bought this guy a couple years ago on eBay and just never even tried this, but you, twist that, wind him up like a watch, and get him started. And that's his mutant power, uh, like earthquake type of vibrational power. So that's cool that they actually incorporated that into his, his play feature. And Cable's main squeeze domino, or is it domino? I have this vague recollection of this not actually being domino. Someone was copying Domino, so the Domino we were introduced to and saw for the first year or two ended up being a fake. I'm not really a fan of stuff like that, because then when you bring in the real character, we don't actually know that real character at all. The real character ends up being a, a copy of the fake. But this is Domino, and she comes with a gun that you can load this missile rocket into some kind of spring loaded action I don't really know how that works maybe you just pull it like that and then let go and it fires out sunspot got the power of heat fire kind of like the human torch really cool look to the character I'm surprised this hasn't become a bigger character for the Marvel Universe and he's got a bit of an action feature as well. He's got this kind of standard now looking thumb catch on the back. And when you move him back and forth by the wrist, it's kind of hard to actually get your thumb on there. It's easier to just grab him by the head maybe or shoulders. And he does basically like a power strut if you want to put some Bee Gees music on. My uh, favorite X-Force member next to Cable, it's Cannonball, Sam Guthrie. The, is he an Eternal? I know he's a mortal. Uh, spoiler, I guess. Even though it's been 20 or 30 years since that was revealed. And they did a movie with Sam Guthrie in it. Was it the New Mutants? He's originally one of the New Mutants. And it was a pretty forgettable movie, but his character was the absolute highlight of that movie for me. It was really awesome seeing Cannonball in live action and doing his Cannonball shtick. And here's Warpath, who had a second version, which I thought looked a lot better. I've got it somewhere. I, I couldn't find it. It's... uh put it aside when I was doing a previous video I think for uh, Transformers Warpath and uh, I gotta find it but this is the original version 
It's got the little thumb thing on the back too, and he can do a power strut as well. He does a power punch. And to finish off the X-Force section, a couple more versions of Cable. There are quite a few of them. This was one of the later versions. I remember seeing this in the Cable Solo comic. I think he was wearing this when he first returns from death, being lost in uh, whatever vortex he was in. And I've also given him that custom. I did that with quite a few of the Cable figures, the custom glow-in-the-dark part on the eye. And here it is in the dark. Cable is a man of many gimmicks, many mechanical gadgets. And so this one actually comes with two of them. It's got a repelling line, which I am not remembering how that works. I guess you can just grab either end and have him zip line with this thing. He also comes with a gun. I think this is his original gun. Just a standard missile launcher gun. We're not done with the cable variants. He's uh, molting. This one is the Terminator cable. It was revealed in that crossover series, the Executioner song. That cable didn't just have one metal arm and a cybernetic eye. He actually is completely metal on one whole side of his body. So he's in a standard X-Men outfit here. And they have made part of his face removable. And it's a very Terminator-like, just like in the comic. And then a piece of uh, skin pops off of his arm, revealing the cybernetic arm. Doesn't work very well. Pops off very easily. And the last cable I have is Space Cable. Love this one because it was the uh, outfit he wears at the very end of the Executioner song when he's going up against Strife. And a lot of the X-Men had a similar outfit. Unfortunately, you can't really pop the heads off of these old Toy Biz figures and pop in like a Cyclops head or a Wolverine head. The helmet does actually come off of him so that you can custom paint his eye if you want. And I don't believe there's any action feature here. It doesn't seem to be any buttons. The uh, gun looks like it's got a moving part right here. I think it's just you can simulate that it's shooting. Got a couple of X Factor figures too. This is such a huge line, not just X-Men, but X-Force and X-Factor. It's Alex Summers, the brother of Cyclops, Scott Summers. And really muscular, beefy looking. I think he's one of the later figures, so they were going more for the Power of the Force 2 Wave 1 super muscular figures. He's got a little Havoc ball, so he can cry Havoc and you can actually get him to whip it out by twisting. Interesting that he doesn't have the little thumb thing. I guess they had done away with it at that point, but you can twist his waist and then get him to cry havoc. That's actually a pretty cool effect. And Havoc's gal Polaris, who I don't know much about. She comes with a big lollipop for some reason. I guess it has something to do with her mutant ability. Comes with a really cool uh, translucent gun. Really lights up nice. And She's got some kind of a play feature too. Let's try to figure out what that is. Looks like it's an uppercut feature. So if you click the arm into place and push this down, she will uppercut with her giant mutant lollipop. And this is a fun guy. It's Strong Guy from X Factor. He is humongous. Just to give you a comparison of how he measures up to other figures. There's Cannonball. He's got the little spot on the back for your thumb too, which gives him an uppercut action or strutting if you want. And all I got left now is actual X-Men figures. Banshee! 
who I was never that big a fan of in the comics, but in X-Men First Class, he is the highlight of that movie for me. Especially when he's flying around doing his mutant power, which is the ability to create audio waves, sound waves that allow him to catch the air so he can glide through the air while he's doing his banshee howl. There's a little pole on the back here, which I think if you blow into it, it actually does that banshee sound. It's supposed to be like a whistle. It doesn't work very well. You can see the hole in the chest right there where the sound is supposed to come out. And we got Forge, another character that was never very prominently featured, but a cool character nonetheless. He has the mutant ability. He's got the magic touch when it comes to mechanical stuff, which is a cool mutant power. It's always cool when they can come up with something that isn't some sort of projectile like Havoc or Cyclops do, Energy Blast or anything like that. Forge is a builder and he's got some translucent parts on him that remind me so much of Bionic 6. I'd love to have some Bionic 6, but I guess I've always just been okay with, well, I've got Forge and he's kind of a bionic figure, very similar to those guys. Comes with a gun and a holster on the side, little button on the back when you pull it. Quick draw action. And it's the future man, Bishop, who had a really cool storyline in the comics. He was kind of spinning his wheels after that story played out. Someone kills Xavier in the future and it's one of the X-Men. And he's sent back in time to find out who the traitor is. But he doesn't know who it is or he can't remember who it was. So for quite some time, there's a really cool story arc between him and Remy LeBeau, Gambit. Because he suspects Gambit is the traitor. He's from a dystopian future. He kind of became redundant when Cable showed up and kind of out-gimmicked him. And Cable's from a more distant future, which is even more dystopian and messed up. So... Bishop just kind of seemed like um, cable light. He has a action feature. You press the button on his back and he brings the hammer down. One of his weapons has this moving part to it. And speaking of Remy LeBeau, hello, Pitsy. This guy was so cool in the comic as well as on the animated series. And he's got a cool mutant power, the ability to charge things with explosive kinetic energy say like a deck of cards turn each one of them into a little bomb the uh, coat is brutal it is brizzoodle by today's standards this is just kind of vinyl garbage bag a little thicker than a garbage bag but they wanted to give him his trench coat but save on the materials so yeah it's it's a sign of the times with his staff that is very bendy and he's got a button on the back with a hole cut out so you can get at it. And I think if you lock his hand into place, it'll um, have him swing it. But I don't, I don't want to move this guy around too much. I don't want to tear this vintage trench coat of his. So we'll just have to settle for him charging this right here and blowing something up next up it is Kurt Wagner Nightcrawler super cool looking figure it's awesome that he got to shine in some of the movies X-Men 2 he's got a big role and then in first class they brought him in to those movies as well or the first class universe I guess you can call it and his gimmick is that he can stick to walls. So you can take these little suction cups and have him stick to a window. I don't know how well he would stick to like a, a regular porous wall. I tried the wall and he wouldn't stick, but he's got no problem sticking to the ceiling. Very, uh, very Spider-Man style. For a bit. And Colossus who was an awesome character to play in the X-Men arcade game. Love that special 
attack of his where you just hit his mutant power and he uh, metals up. He unmetals and metals back up and just destroys everyone around him. And uh, he lifts for his mutant power. His mutant power is actually turning his skin into steel, but the toy does this. So most of these are figures that I've picked up in recent years, but I remember having this guy back in the day. This isn't my original Iceman, but that's... The thing that's so nice about toy collecting is you can get something that's exactly like the one you had. It's actually better than the one I had because I think I still have it somewhere in a bin and it's just very schmutzy and in terrible shape. It's nice to just hit the uh, reset button and have a basically a brand new looking one. Iceman, I've been a fan ever since Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I was surprised like most people to learn he was actually an X-Man who was guest starring on that show. Uh, one of the very first translucent figures and he comes with a really cool ice sled. Thank goodness it's basically a stand so you don't have to worry about your ice man falling over. And I need to be extra careful with this one so I'm wearing a rubber coated work glove. It is a rogue. You do not want to touch this lady. She has the mutant ability to absorb your mutant power or your essence if you're not a mutant. And she's got for her action feature you lock her arm into place there and I guess you don't even have to push the, uh, the button you can just tap the arm but this will also release it. Bruce Lee one inch punch barely travels but I think any punch from Rogue is gonna knock you clear into orbit. And Dr. Fraser Crane, or rather Dr. Hank McCoy, the brilliant beast, awesome looking figure, big hulking, and he has a weapon that has a kind of a play feature. Instead of sticking the suction cups on the figure like they did with Nightcrawler, which kind of messes the figure up, they just gave him this bar to hang on to, and you can stick it. To the ceiling and it holds hopefully fairly well that's really cool i mean beast hangs from the ceiling so much in the comic and in the cartoon that uh it's cool to just have him hanging from the ceiling i would actually maybe have him hanging from the ceiling as part of this display if i would trust him to not fall down he's got some kind of play feature that i don't believe is working anymore this back here isn't doing anything I think it was supposed to activate. He's got like springs in his feet to do soccer kicks. I'm not sure how those connect to this. Seems broken to me. Also interesting is on the bottom of his feet there are these little kind of soft plastic rubbery pieces. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe they were supposed to be sticky and to allow him to stick to the ceiling. That would be a cool way to display him too. Maybe if I uh, glued some magnets onto his feet. And just a few left. Super cool character from the comics, Psylocke, with her psionic knife. They never did her justice in the movies. Hopefully now that uh, X-Men is back with the MCU, they, uh, they can feature her a little bit more. There weren't too many of these figures with light up features but this this is awesome it's actually connected to the figure too this psionic knife of hers when it plugs into her hand there is there are leads in the hand and the handle on the psionic knife is metal it looks like a headphone jack plug it in there the connection is made and it's cool that you don't have to push something on the psionic knife you just push it on the back here and it lights up really bright and now that the lights are all off you can see just how bright it is it's amazing batteries were completely dead the originals and i just popped in a fresh pair that is amazing you wouldn't want that going through your temple and here's warren worthington the third originally the angel now archangel i had the original version which i really 
don't prefer over this one. This is the second version. And I think he just looks so much cooler from the later waves when they were looking a little more muscular, closer to what they look like in the comic books. Nice floppy material for the wings so you won't break them. And unmasked as well. I uh, really prefer the unmasked look for Warren over the masked one that the original version of this figure had. And just two left, we've got the co-commanders of the X-Men, the co-field leaders, Aurora Monroe, also known as Storm. And I got this one for like five bucks at a toy show because this little thing on it is ripped. Other than that, perfect condition. And I've said it time and time again, and I'll keep saying it. A lot of what I have, I have because it's missing pieces or has broken pieces. And that's the way to go. If you want to really grow your collection, be cool with missing parts and broken parts. Because you can't nitpick. You can't just say the whole thing is ruined because one little thing is wrong with it. And that's such an easy repair. I haven't gotten around to doing it yet, but it'll be easy to just glue that together or just tear it right off. She doesn't even really need that part of the outfit. Action feature. There's a lever on the back. You push it down and nothing happens. Is this supposed to light up? I'm not sure. I never had this one originally. And if it is supposed to light up, I don't see where you're supposed to swap the batteries because the hair looks glued on actually. It's not coming off. So I, I wondered if it was supposed to be some kind of sparking action that's not working. But at any rate, it doesn't really bother me. I don't at this point use them for the action features anymore other than just to like a video like this. But uh, awesome silver paint job on it. And it'll work quite nicely as a display piece. And last, but certainly not least, one of my favorite X-Men. I always forget about him. I always think of Cable and Wolverine, Iceman, the more spectacular, dramatic X-Men, even Colossus. This guy is just Duke. He's the Duke of X-Men. He's the rock, the steady, even keel leader that you can depend on. But he's also got one of the most amazing mutant special powers the optic blast and i love that when they rate mutants they say xavier is at the top i forget if it's like a five out of five or a 10 out of 10 rating but they say xavier is at the top gene gray is at the top who i don't have actually I never tracked down a toy biz gene gray that i was really satisfied with but they say gene is also at the very top magneto and i love that cyclops is up there too. I don't know if he's like a four out of five or a full five out of five, but it really gets his optic blast over as not just something that you shrug off when you're hit with it. And the really cool thing about this figure, I had the original one when I was a kid and I much prefer this outfit because that's just when I started reading the X-Men comic, he uh, changed over to this look and got rid of the hood. But they were able to incorporate his mutant ability, the optic blast. And this was back when not very many toys had light up features, especially like this small, this isolated just the, uh, the visor of his head. And after all these years, the battery still works. I haven't replaced this one. And we'll take a look at it in the dark. So cool like a Knight Rider effect if you move them from side to side. And that's it. My 90s Toy Biz Marvel X-Men X-Force X-Factor collection. At the very front of it, since like I said, Executioner Song is my favorite X-Men story ever. I've got the main characters, Cable and Strife. Xavier plays a big role even though he's incapacitated for most of it. I need to take another look and hunt down a good Jean Grey figure because she belongs at the front of that too but for now the Summers boys are on either side of it. I love how Havoc just sneaks into the final climax of the story because he is a blood relative of Cyclops and some of the other major players. Apocalypse, Magneto, Wolverine. There's that giant Apocalypse in the back which looks so cool. 
I was thinking of adding a sentinel in here too, but it might take away from the, the um, size of that giant apocalypse in the back. And that was a lot of fun going through all of those and rearranging them again. I had a uh, domino accident not too long ago, and I'm not talking about that domino. One of them got knocked over and they all just dominoed down and fell down, so I've been uh, meaning to set them all back up and it was cool to go through them all and remember some of the ones that I forgot I had and find out play features like Richter's. That was really cool learning about that today. I am definitely going to look into attaching some magnets onto Beast's feet so that he can hang from the ceiling. I think that would be cool. So I want to thank Cameron for suggesting this for a special missions video. And also, thanks for all your support on Patreon, Cameron. Really appreciate it. I want to give a shout out to a couple of Cameron's Instagrams. He's got Boss Pedal Projects, which you'll see some of these guys and other Marvel characters and vintage toys show up for his uh, awesome guitar pedal collection. And also Cam's Toy Room, if you want to see some more vintage Marvel figures, both the uh, X-Men stuff as well as uh, Avengers, Spider-Man, Secret Wars, stuff like that. Check it out. So thanks for watching this video. Appreciate you taking the time. And feel free to share and to join the tribe. Stick a psionic blade and subscribe.